peace, peace, shalom, hotep, assalamu law, peace to the gods and earth, assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah, wa barakatuh to the Muslims. I'm your brother in the struggle, brother minister, Alif Allah. And today, family, I like to just have a little penny for your thoughts. That I want you to reflect on why we get when we give to God. Imagine a person coming to you and they say, um, I want to give you something, give you a gift. But you can only get one gift. And th they put down a penny, a nickel, a dime quarter, a 50 cent piece, a dollar piece. They put down a dollar bill, five dollar bill. They even put down tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, even a thousand dollar bill. And on the side, they write out a check for ten thousand dollars. And they say, you can only pick one. Which one would you pick? Some people would take the cash. Some people would take the check. But Imagine the laughter when the foolish man came and he took the penny. And everybody said, why you take the penny? That's the penny. You could at least took, you know, the dollar and got you a hundred pennies in return. But the foolish man smiled and walked away with his penny. And he took his penny and he went to a coin collector, a numismatic coin collector. And he gave him the penny. And when the coin collector looked at the penny, he said, you have good observation. Because most people don't realize in 1943, during World War II, there was a scarcity of copper in the United States of America. The United States meant stop printing copper pennies. So the zinc covered pennies that had to be used was covered with steel and things of that nature there. It was real rare. But in 1944, there was a rare penny that this foolish man received. And this penny made in 1944, today and 2023, is worth over $408,000. We often judge books by their covers. When Master Farah Muhammad in the 1930s would pick his ministers, he modified his mathematics one day and explained to the ministry class, in the past I let y'all pick the minister. Y'all would often pick the smartest one, the loudest one, the tallest one, the most educated one, the most articulate one. He said, today I'ma pick the minister. And everybody looking, you know, you had college graduates, you know, people with high school diplomas, you know, people that were business entrepreneurs, handsome men. And he said, hey, you over there, Elijah, Kareem, come on up here, that's what who, me? <laughs> Little Elijah, <laughs> the one that could barely speak English, the one that can't talk all loud and boisterous and be as eloquent as the other ministers, the one that is not as dapper and fly and got the money like the fly ministers. You want me? But well, I'm nobody. It's like, yeah, I want, I want you. Come on up here. And he said, this is going to be my minister. And he made the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Kareem Abdul Muhammad, and made him the supreme minister. Ultimately, he would be known as the first, last, and only messenger of Allah. That little penny, that man with no value, had value because of circumstances. Because God saw something in him that others did not see. And that's how we are often in this day and time. We think that, you know, if you got a Maybach, a Rolls Royce, a Tesla, red bottom shoes, red bottom hats, big diamonds, you know, giant mansions, all the material trappings of Satan's world, that that's where your value comes from. 
but your real value comes from the careful observance of truth. And Master Far Muhammad knew that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had it in him not to change the teachings as he taught it to him. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he used that legacy to help teach his ministers. And he explained to us in How to Eat the Live, leave my teachings as it is. You may not think that that old raggly message to the black man, that little Muhammad speaks, those lessons, you'd be like, oh, we, you know, if we was to take and um, build on these lessons, they'd be way more sophisticated. Fine, do that on the side, but leave his teachings as it is. Don't take away anything from the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You can add on to the cipher, but make sure you understand that's you. That's your Islam. That's You have to teach the people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us. And don't say that without telling the people where and when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it. Because often we say the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches this and that and the message to be like, I don't teach that nonsense. I don't teach that trick knowledge. Don't think that the things you hear in the year 2023 was taught in 1930 to 1975. That's the goobly gook. That's that spooky stuff. The messenger taught us some plain truth. And it may not seem like it's important. It may not get all the likes and views on YouTube and Instagram. It may not get all the fancy stuff like a Dr. Martha King or Malcolm X and all that kind of stuff. But you don't measure the value of a man or a coin on this surface. You can have a penny and that penny could be so worn out, it'll be less than a penny. And you can have a penny that is precious and preserved because it kept its purity. And that one cent is worth over $408,000. Master Farad Muhammad explained that we're like a zero and he's like the one. If you put the zero on the right side of a one, you increase the value to 10. And if you put that same zero on the left side of the one, it becomes one tenth of one. It loses 90% of its wealth, of this value, just because it's in the wrong position. So you wonder, why can't the fish fly like the bird? Why can't the cat bark like the dog? It's not his nature. Your nature is to be God. Your nature is to be a goddess. Be yourself. The struggle continues. And remember, only the messenger's message can guide you through this age of mess. Peace.